Located in the southeastern region of Worcester County, Massachusetts, lays the quiet town of Hopedale. Once a great milestone for capitalism and industry, Hopedale is now full of beautiful scenery, a wonderful community, and an old abandoned building located directly in the center of town. The history of this town cannot be explained without telling the tale of the company that carried it through the Industrial Revolution. The story begins in 1842, when Aidan Ballou settled in the town of Menden, Massachusetts with the idea of starting a socialist utopian commune. Aidan Ballou uh, was a uh, man who was born in 1803 in Cumberland, Rhode Island. He had had a brother by the name of Cyrus who he'd been very close to, and Cyrus had died uh, quite young. When Aidan was about 17, 18 years old, uh, in bed one night, he had a vision of Cyrus telling him he must go and, and preach the gospel of Jesus or their blood would be on his hands. Then in the 20s, he became the minister in, uh, in the Unitarian Church in Menden. This was a time of all kinds of reform movements, uh, abolitionism being the, the big one. But uh, by about 1840, he and the people that he was involved in felt that they, uh, they needed to form their own community somewhere where they could live out their ideals, but eventually found an old, uh, pretty much abandoned farm in Hopedale, referred to as the Old House, because even in 1842, uh, this house was 150 years old then. So, so there began the Hopedale community. They were one of, I believe, three utopian community experiments at the time. Um, and they were the longest lasting. They lasted 15 years. Over time, more homes were built, but initially they did live, 44 of them, including children, in uh, the old house. Among the settlers of Ballou's community were George and Ebenezer Draper. Well, the Drapers were both heavily involved in the utopian community. A commune. George and Ebenezer were both members. One of them started later and I believe it was George who started just a few years before the the commune was dissolved. Uh, they had both become significant shareholders in the in the commune and because of that together they owned about three quarters of the stock in the commune. The Draper brothers helped the commune by providing money for the community to survive with. The money was generated from a business they had started when they moved to Hopedale. They were the two who really brought the company to fruition eventually. Um, this little red shop was built um, in 1841 at the time when the community was founded. And uh, they built loom parts here. Um, it was built by Ebenezer Draper. The production that was going on here at the little red shop of loom parts was largely financing the community. While they both adhered to the principles subscribed to by Aidan Ballou and his followers, uh, they also had a, a mindset of, you know, wanting to make money. And I think that they started to see that the utopian experiment wasn't really going to work out. Their profits from this uh, pot, this thing called a temple, were basically supporting the whole community. It was the most successful product in the community. So they decided that they would withdraw their investment uh, to start making this money on their own and not supporting this whole utopian commune. The Drapers found success in manufacturing the temple, a piece of the loom which they had a patent for. The temple changed the textile industry forever. Uh, they had inherited the patent, evidently, to an invention of their father, Ira Draper. In 1816, Ira had come up with uh, a part of a loom that helped to speed up the weaving of it uh, considerably. The temple is actually a device that's used to help stretch the, the cloth or the, whatever is being woven on the loom, and to, it keeps it to the correct width. It didn't take long for the drapers to greatly expand their business. So they went from creating one element of a loom to de determining that they could actually do the whole thing themselves. And in doing so, they were able to become the largest manufacturer of textile looms in the world by 1900. You know, they did everything from assembling the machines here to shipping them from here. 
they produced the looms that fueled the in, the uh, textile industry, which was one of the staples in, in New England and eventually all up and down the East Coast. The, then they began to ship their looms around the world. They made everything from the beginning to the end. Uh, they could make a screw, they could make uh, a casting, uh, anything that was associated with the loom they could make in-house. So they didn't outsource anything at that time. The Draper Corporation was unlike many of the other companies in the area because they were looking for specific types of skilled laborers. They needed machinists and they needed engineers and you know this was a machine shop. They were building something here. It wasn't just milling flour or um, you know or just even a textile mill where they're just creating one product. This was a, a real significant operation. They really care about their workers. They provide beautiful housing. They wanted to have a place where people would want to come to live. The rent was nominal uh, to the employees and they would come in and help to maintain the home. They would replace the light bulbs, they would come in and paint or repaper one or two rooms a year. So they um, not only encouraged pride and, and upkeep of the homes, they helped. <laughs> Essentially they ran Hopedale for about a hundred years. After over a hundred years of operation, the Draper Corporation was bought by North American Rockwell. The company managed to stay in business for just a few more years before finally having to close its doors. The downturn actually happened before Rockwell. Um, it, throughout the years, Draper's was known for their quality, uh, their service, their research, um, not necessarily price. And in the 50s, there were other countries producing looms. The textile industry everywhere, a lot of it started being farmed out, either at first down south, then overseas. And also, I don't think that they kept up with the technology as they had earlier on, where they were more the innovators. The Swiss were a, uh, a major part of the decline because they were able to make a better loom, a much quieter loom, which OSHA wanted us to do, uh, as their noise regulations were being um, uh, implemented. My understanding is that because they controlled so much that it was very difficult for folks when Draper left because politically I mean, they were not here anymore. Uh, financially, you have empty buildings no longer generating um, tax revenues for the town. Um, I think a lot of people were bitter because that's all they knew. And some of us who have gotten involved recently, in the last several years, with learning about the history of Hopedale, always wondered why there was really nothing that that came to fruition as far as preserving the history and telling the story. And we surmise that a lot of that has to do with how things were left. The legacy of the Draper Corporation lives on through the Little Red Shop, the original workshop of George and Ebenezer Draper. The Little Red Shop exists today as a museum located across the street from the old Draper building. The museum is open to the public and exhibits the history of Hopedale and the Draper Corporation.